uh, so the, the last talk of this workshop will be given by Professor Yao Chunpei from National Chenggong University. He's going to talk about cosmology. So let's welcome the speaker. Thanks very much for uh, all the conference organizers. And, uh, it's my pleasure to speak at the end of the conference, I guess. And, uh, well, I'm not sure how the highly related to uh, the subject of this workshop, but I guess inflation also is kind of uh, non Okay. So, so topic is probably is a bit off uh, the main subject of this uh, conference, this workshop. This uh, is a a long uh, introduction about the background so, because we know that on a very large scale our universe which is uh, almost homogeneous and isotropic and almost a uh, uh, spatial flight so we use this uh, metric to describe it A is the scale effect uh, we control the this, uh, spatial section of the universe so actually we can define the sum of uh, to indicate uh, the status of the universe uh, for example this half parameter here is a time, fractional first time dependent of the scale factor. So this concept of plastic. Plastic edge means uh, universe is expanding. And the other is uh, this uh, this dispersion, dispersion parameter. So this is defined as minus fractional second time of the scale factor in terms of half units. Okay, so minus Q means uh, accelerated. Okay. And also related to the one parameter we will talk about a lot, that is the first slow roll parameter. So when epsilon less than one also means uh, this uh, phase is also accelerated. So from this uh, parameter, we can know, uh, roughly know the status of the universe. And uh, the other thing I want to talk about is the early phase. Uh, from the current of the observation, many observations, for example, the cosmic microwave background is about uh, uh, 2.7 Kelvin. Uh, it's a very uh, homogeneous, it's almost a uh, black body radiation, and uh, this uh, has a very tiny uh, uh, fractional, fractional uh, temperature fluctuation, it's like uh, 10 to minus 5. So from this observation, if you do not have uh, this early phase of uh, asteroid expansion, it's very hard uh, to explain uh, why you can see this almost uh, black body uh, radiation in the cosmic microwave background. Uh, and also other phenomena, for example, we do not see strong evidence of uh, primor primordial radix, like uh, primordial uh, monopoles or primordial uh, black holes. So without the uh, early phase of uh, asteroid expansion, it also will be harder to explain. And the other phenomena, such as the high current universe with uh, density is so compatible with the critical density of uh, almost uh, uh, spatial flight universe. So all of these things uh, indicate there exists an uh, early phase of accelerated expansion. Uh, uh, except uh, you believe a miracle to happen. Some people say, okay, let's just uh, set up initial condition in a super spatial way so that the uh, current universe will evolve in such a way we saw today. And uh, by the simulation, this probability is very, very low. So this is very hard to deny. Uh, this existence of uh, early phase of SRT expansion. And uh, this early phase of SRT expansion we call primordial inflation. Okay? So this is built from the observation constraint in the cosmic microwave background. The problem is from the fundamental level, we don't know what things cause this uh, SRT expansion because we don't know, know anything from the first principle, from the fundamental. And of course, we can have a lot of model, for example, this model. Uh, we call this a sim uh, single, single uh, scalar model. This uh, Einstein given term is uh, this massive cinema couple scalar. And this is a potential. And we call this a scalar as an infinite. Okay? And uh, usually, if you have theory, if you know the potential form, then you compute the sum object from this theory, and you say you predict something from this theory. Here, we just uh, use in a reverse way, that is, we get uh, some constraint uh, from the cosmic microwave background, and we get some information, this is data, and then we, we construct the potential, so that 
we can uh, use the data to support whatever uh, illusion of uh, universe history you want. Okay, the idea is uh, you just uh, work out uh, to, this is Einstein equation, this is zero zero component, this is IJ component. So we call this the Friedman equation. And uh, when you add this equation together, you get function. This is scalar as a function of time. When you subtract this uh, uh, two equation, you get this uh, potential in terms of background information. How do you reconstruct the potential in terms of phi? That is just the result t in terms of scalar factor. This sort of just re 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 rotates this uh, y x to the x y, then uh, you substitute the t over phi in this background, for example, h dot of t. Then you reconstruct the model, this potential model, to support the data we have for this uh, evolution of the universe history. So this is the basic idea. Even though we do not have a unique model for inflation from the fundamental level, from the first principle, but we can get this reconstruction of the potential. And this kind of model work. Okay. And uh, this model, even though this model works, but uh, actually it has some problem. Uh, the problem uh, is well known, you know, we call the fine tuning problems. Okay? Um, for example, in order to uh, start inflation, uh, this kind of uh, single scalar model, you have to assume uh, this initial state is almost uh, homogeneous and uh, isotropic, but not exactly uh, homogeneous and isotropic. You also have to assume the potential energy dominates uh, over kinetic energy uh, more than the uh, three Hubble value of this is simulation by Perrin. And also, from the, this uh, cosmic microwave data constraint, uh, the duration of uh, primordial inflation must uh, let uh, at least uh, less than 50 defaultings. So you have to uh, make this uh, uh, you have to uh, adjust like that. And also, we have uh, measured the scalar power spectrum. So you also have to adjust the, this uh, value roughly equal to 10 to minus 11. And uh, we also have a measured upper bound tensor to scalar ratio. So from this upper bound of tensor scalar ratio plus the major of the scalar power spectrum, you can infer the upper bound of tensor scalar power spectrum. So you also have to adjust uh, g square v uh, agree with this upper bound. So this is all the fine tuning you have to do. And then finally, you want to end the inflation and uh, go smoothly to the radiation. That's the, in between the uh, epic uh, we call the reheating. So in order to get high enough temperature, uh, we need request uh, infratar couple to ordinary matter. If we only have uh, infratar couple to graviton, the gravitational coupling is too small in order to uh, reach the high enough temperature. So we need this uh, couple to ordinary matter, and this is cause the problem. Uh, why is the problem? Because when you uh, request the infrared couple to ordinary matter, then the zero point of fluctuation of this ordinary matter will give correction to the classical potential. So potential should get changed. Uh, so in order to agree with this, then you will find out the condition five actually work against uh, condition two. For example, if this potential uh, after the column correction become too steep, that means the infertile uh, will uh, roll down the potential too soon, so the duration will be, become small, less than 50. So you work against it. And also you have to find two conditions three and four because uh, uh, this is a requirement for reheating. Uh, finally, is uh, fine tuning about uh, cosmological constant because right now we know we measure positive and very small value of a cosmological constant. In this uh, region, uh, we say the scale of driven inflation, then you can you have to adjust. Uh, you have to adjust uh, this. Uh, a minima of uh, potential uh, multiplied is g squared roughly equal to this value 10 to minus 123. So this is all fine new things you have to do and uh, you have to be careful because you already find out uh, condition 5 actually uh, work against uh, condition 2, 3, 4. So you have to be careful. 
And the common attitude to this is uh, we just find to avoid whatever uh, common coercion give back to this uh, classical potential. So let's look at uh, uh, what kind of potential we have. For example, if you have a flat space type of uh, potential, it's a common one form, positive means the coercion by bosons, and negative means coercion by fermions. And this is a constant uh, times equal to the force power times the logarithm of this dimension is uh, parameter square. Okay? And the typical, this kind of potential is very steep. So, and also coupling constant is not small, so it's not like uh, 10 to minus 10, like a gravitational uh, coupling, so you cannot ignore. And uh, typically, will make this potential very, very steep. So if uh, this uh, primordial effective potential has this form, even though you will make a big change and uh, make a duration of a primordial inflation very short, but it's no problem we just do it by brute force, find to your way. Okay, we can do that. Okay, but this is uh, the thing we usually do. And uh, but, uh, the effective potential actually is not a common one before. We can do a little bit further study. That is the effective potential in this theta. This theta is uh, much close to the uh, primordial inflation. Uh, this uh, mentioned uh, the theta epsilon is exact zero. Uh, the, the primordial is uh, epsilon is like uh, 0 0.05 or 4 something. So let's uh, look at uh, the theta effective potential and test this form. We will say, okay, later I will show you how complicated it is. Uh, this is the same positive is from both some negatives from the uh, fermions. And uh, because the complication actually comes from extra dimension for parameter, that is uh, this uh, uh, H, this uh, power parameter. So it actually takes this form. Okay. And of course, you can do the consistency check. That is, you know the phase space time h is uh, zero. So if you do the large argument expansion, that is, you either take uh, if a time very large, you take h very small, then you uh, get back to this uh, common Weber limit. Uh, this is a common Weber potential limit. However, the important uh, uh, for the primordial inflation is not uh, the large field expansion. Actually, it's a small field expansion. So it goes like this. And of course, we want to find it that way. So we can do as much as possible we want. For example, the first two turns, we find it that way by using this uh, quoted counter, uh, quoted counter turn and a couple more counter turns. However, we don't know how to find it the higher order term because we don't know what is a suitable term we can use, uh, suitable local counter can index that. And uh, for, this is just the case for, for uh, this data, but uh, for the true primordial inflation, H, H is not constant. So actually it causes more problem. And uh, later I will show you, uh, actually H square depends uh, not locally on metric. So, this is the problem. Uh, six from here, this uh, initial study already show it's not that easy. We can actually it's a spike Q problem, which is much worse than what we think. And uh, I hope at the end I will show you the simulation uh, done by student. Okay. So before you go, I just try to understand the logic here. You you think that reheating actually gives you some constraint?
the seniority down is still up here. Yeah, right. So I'm just thinking uh, in the 90s, uh, the way that we were thinking is you just go through the whole thing, inflation, and then reheating, right? And then the, the reheating temperature, of course, is very important because that governs everything that follows. Presumably that is in your uh, two and three, right? The, that comes later. And now you're using those as an input to constrain the potential whereby you can do the reheating in order to check the later results to be consistent. You're working backwards, is that right? Yes, I work backwards. So you mean uh, you do this first, uh, then uh, you find him this? But you, you know those things, presumably, right? Afterwards, yeah. right? And yeah. then you try to push back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you have to pass through the reheating stage. Yes. And of course, that depends a lot on the potential so yeah. from, from that kind of logic. Yeah. Okay, but then the reheating itself, there are many ways, right, that you can do the reheating calculation, depending on the power company. Yes. Depending on the kind of body. Yeah. And you, you are going through all possible mechanisms. I only consider three. Basic model, one is coupled to those together, the second coupled to fermions, oh. and the third is coupled to get both of these photons. Yeah. So you're doing that, right? Yeah, I try to do it. It's not complete yet. I know. <laughs> Sorry. Good enough. Uh, okay. So, yeah, sorry. I think uh, this is it. Yeah, I, I finished this. So uh, this is uh, the, actually you ask uh, the slides uh, the following. <laughs> so this is the three models. Uh, the, the first uh, is input type couple. This is good fit input type couple to ordinary scalar. This is company turns. This is kinetic turns. And uh, this is uh, uh, arbitrary non minima couple to the uh, thing. And the other, the second model is input type couple to fermion through this Yukawa. This is, uh, Fermion kinetic turns. And the third model is this uh, gauge boson A new couple to this uh, complex input type. And this is a uh, uh, gauge boson kinetic turns. And later I will show you this uh, general expression, large field expansion, small field expansion. What is this at JCD? JCD is uh, uh, the Dirac, that is uh, the, the Dirac representation for oh, the, the spinner. The spinner oh. yeah. And the A new CD the spin connection. Yeah. Uh, so this is the kind of details. Uh, okay. So let's uh, just uh, review uh, the origin of this uh, effective potential and uh, the relation with the reheating. Uh, here, let's also look at the simplest case in place less time. This is a kinetic turn of ordinary matter, and this is a complex turn. Okay. And uh, when we say uh, reheated, that means we want uh, this uh, infotype couple to ordinary matter. And uh, you can see this is uh, mass turn is one half which is square, uh, infotype square, phi square. Okay. So typically, we want light mass turn of this uh, ordinary matter because this mass turn roughly propor uh, inverse proportional to the resonance frequency. So if you have too large uh, mass turn here, that means the resonance frequency is very, very small and uh, you cannot get enough reheating. And uh, so this is the idea. And also if you have a very large vacuum fluctuation, I just want to subtract that off. So the thing is just to keep this mass turn of uh, ordinary data is very small, not very small, not roughly small, so that I can have uh, effective resonance frequency. And uh, when you do that, you get uh, enough reheating. And uh, when you do that, you also will shaking ordinary matter. So this ordinary matter, you sum up okay, all of this uh, zero point of fluctuation, zero point energy fluctuation of this uh, ordinary matter, then uh, this will give you the correction to the effective tension. So this is the basic idea, and this is a flat based time case. It's easier to see, and uh, you know the first phase like this, when you sum up all of this zero point of quantum fluctuation, you give a uh, common Weber form. 
Because later I can show you the car. The distinction is much more complicated. Of things. And uh, this is the vector part. 
for the this is general form, and the large field, small field. So you will see it's much more complicated. So the large field, small field, refer to the large field. I mean, uh, I mean also file or? Uh, what I mean is a large argument. Uh, uh, let me show you the thing I should probably more. What I mean is uh, this thing, the whole thing is large. I see. Yeah, yeah. So. I, this is a parameter I try to explain. So the, CC is a combined constant. Oh no no, it's just a coupling constant. Depends on oh, the theory. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is all coupling constant because oh, okay. the different theory different the coupling constant. And your coupling constant is squared. Yes, yes. Yeah, so uh, here uh, when you consider the is in the relation in curve in that one space. Yes, in the decita space. Yes, in the decita space. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a decita it is a special case of uh, certain problems of work uh, when carbon parameter equal to constant and uh, when force zero parameter is zero. Okay. Then uh, you have uh, this uh, sweet phi and then the conformal one. Oh, this is a conformal uh, counter turn. This is a quoted counter turn. And when you take a one dirty, you get a reduced one factor of uh, squid fee. Mm -hmm. And I add these two turns just to try to uh, eliminate, uh, I mean, fine tune uh, as much as possible we can uh, for small field expansion. Because you can see this star from the Z to the six is because we already fine tune mm -hmm. the thing we can do for the small field. This is why we add these two terms. So what, what kind of method are you using to compute uh, background field method? Uh, I use, uh, I don't know the, the name, but I can tell you how I compute it. It's basically, <laughs> <laughs> basically it's, uh, you just compute the exponential of uh, this uh, effective action. Right? Then uh, you have uh, this effective action, you have classical part. And then you have uh, the other the interaction part. Then you integrate out uh, in the past integral formula. Then you integrate out uh, the interaction part. So you will get a constant limit of the propagator, the ordinary uh, prop, o ordinary matter propagator in the presence of constant uh, squid feed constant. Do I understand? Because the your constant time dependent on the background. So then the uh, buffer should be time dependent. Yes, you should have been time dependent, but the, right now we can't do the time dependent one because I don't have a time dependent propagator. That's why I do it in the decider first. You are right, this is why in the end I want to show you the simulation. Because uh, so far we don't have infinite calculating power. I, I can't, if you know, tell me. I really don't know how to do the calculation. The thing is, because the most part, to do this kind of calculation is propagated in the curved background. If you know the propagator, then you, you almost solve everything. And so far, we only know the, the propagator in this theta. But you know the uh, realistic uh, primordial inflation, of course, you have a slight, slightly tight dependent background. Is that exact this theta? So you are right. Uh, if you know, you should do that. And uh, you might try to compute it uh, using sort of approximation of a scalar propagator, but not exact propagator. So this is an interesting project to go up, but uh, so far I have not gone that far. Okay. But on uh, that theme, you using a pop crate patch, right? Yes. Right. So can you go to the static case, in which case, of course, you, can, you have to propagate, right? That, that covers on the one quarter of that. And is there something that you can I think uh, some people try to do that, uh, but uh, when we check that, uh, because I think uh, when people say if you consider the whole decita, then it's, uh, they have a way to analytic uh, continue from the phase space time. And uh, indeed, you get uh, uh, official form of propagator. Uh, but when you check the response, for example, the to, to the um, coordinates response, then they will find out that this propagator uh, is. Uh, it's not a real pocket, it's a, you have a some, some problem. So 
so you're referring to the one that covers the whole thing, the cost type, and then projecting it to half of that, which is the upgrade patch, and there's a problem. Oh no, this is not what I mean. Uh, the, the, the method you mentioned, I have not think of it yet, because uh, usually you have to know the target for the whole DCTA, then you uh, project into the half DCTA. Yeah. But the thing is, you, you have to know the target in the whole DCTA, and the people do that from doing that from this, uh, doing the analytical calculation from the face best time. And the thing is, when you check that, you find out that this is just kind of, uh, I don't know how to call it, a mathematical form, but uh, uh, actually it's not really corresponding to the, it, it's like in the, uh, when you check this, you will find out that it's corresponding to the, something very weird. It's like uh, you have a negative law or something. Yeah, so the thing is that we also don't know the target uh, for the data. And uh, if we would know, we probably can do the way you mentioned, but uh, the thing is uh, the target and the whole data still have a problem. I was actually referring to the port, the static, the given software. That we know from the uh, Never mind. So I have not noticed that. So there's pathology. Yeah. Why are we interested in small field? So oh, it's because uh, it's uh, in the large field, it's very close to, to the flash based type, but uh, flash based type is far away from the expert expansion. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I didn't understand. Are you saying what, what problem with the large field? Because it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, cold, it's a flash based type limit. Flat, oh, flat. Flat, uh -huh. yeah, flat. So. Uh -huh.
then you do a calculation, you get this result. And uh, also, you can make the other guess, that is, uh, you replace H squared, the effective potential, with R over 12, then you vary it. Later, you specialize to a decimal, and then you get this quantity here. Okay. By this two calculation, of course, you make a different guess, you get a very different result. So how can you tell this H square is really dynamical, which is R over 12, or H square actually is just some constant? The thing is, actually, you can compute the variable stress and you take a variable stress and you tensor over this uh, 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 matter in the physical background. Do not, special, uh, do not specialize it first, you do the variation first, then specialize it to the decimal. You compare the result, which I do not show you, because it's complicated. The, you compare the result and you find out, actually, in the decimal, H square, H is consistent with R over 12. Only a small piece from the counter turns. There is one from the conformal counter turn, the other is from quoted counter turns. The, the H D minus 4, this factor in counter turns, actually is not dynamical, it's, a, it's a constant, okay? But other H square in the uh, effective potential is all dynamical, R over 12. And uh, we want to make a guess how H square depends on the metric is because we do not have an infinite calculating ability. So right now, uh, we, if we know, we can make a guess how it depends on the metric, then we may do something further. Okay? And uh, you can see this part cannot be dynamical because in a phase space time, HD minus, uh, H to the D minus 4, H is just the energy scale to the D minus 4, so it cannot be dynamical, it's constant. Only this part, the, the counterpart, all other, all rest of H squared in the DC, uh, in the effective potential is all dynamical, R over 12. Okay, so if uh, our primordial deflation is really just a DC, I mean, exact DC, S equal to 0, then it's good because this is just uh, involved uh, functional, functional, this is the Ricci scalar. And the functional Ricci scalar is okay. You can, this local piece, you can uh, add into the classical action. So we still can do the brute force, find it that way. The thing is uh, more complicated here because actually it's not really decider from the data constraint. You know the force is lower parameter, it's 0, or the zero, zero something. 5 or 0054. So actually you can uh, try to, here we do not do the really calculation, but actually you can uh, think of it further. For the effective potential, it always involves this uh, co coincidence limit of the propagator. So we don't know the this, uh, uh, massive uh, scalar propagator in Friedman Robinson Walker geometry. But we know the massless propagator in a constant epsilon geometry. So right now, in order to work out the effective potential which involves with this consistency limit of propagator, then we expect this massless propagator in terms of a massless propagator in a constant epsilon geometry. Okay. So after you spend that out, and you find out. Uh, this method is propagated in constant epsilon geometry. Actually, this is a basal function kind of a Hankel function with the uh, basal index related to epsilon. So from here, even though you do not do the real calculation, only from the constant limit of a propagator expansion, you will see there are one more uh, parameter will enter into the effective potential, that is epsilon in addition to phi and h. So you have uh, this uh, epsilon here, and uh, you, if you have uh, this uh, force slower parameter, then you cannot express effective potential purely on um, function of a rich scalar, because this is h dot, right? So then you can, have, you can think of uh, many other ways to try to express why is epsilon in the effective potential. For example, this form, the G is this uh, also the net curvature scalar. Okay? So it becomes much more complicated. In the pure DC, you already see the effective potential is complicated, but uh, if uh, in the 
release the situation, you find out just from this uh, study, not study, I mean the argument, you can see H square is not just R over 12, you can involve forces law part. And uh, you will involve a much more metric combination. And uh, you say, so what? Uh, can we just uh, fine tune that away? The answer is no, because if, uh, first, uh, this is not a good term in the case for action when you have this kind of combination because this is a higher curvature and uh, this is a higher derivative term. When you have higher derivative terms in the case for theory and case for action, it's a no goal theory, we call the theorem of uh, stochastic. That means uh, in the, your theory, or case call, you have uh, this uh, higher derivative terms, that means uh, the system nature consists of a positive uh, energy degree of freedom and a negative energy degree of freedom. Okay, so if you work out the Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian of this kind of theory, you find out the uh, uh, Hamiltonian nature depends linearly on momentum. That means you can go as positive as possible or as negative energy as possible. That means when you try to decide one positive energy degree of freedom, at the same time you also deacetate. Uh, the other is a uh, negative uh, energy degree of freedom to conserve the, this uh, energy of the whole system. So this is not stable and it's not really okay thing to add to the classical action. So we know this is not R12 and uh, this kind of turn to uh, replace this uh, constant, uh, not constant, this uh, force throw problem that is not good. So cannot be added into a physical action. So you cannot just uh, do the brute force by you that way. Then you can say, okay, maybe we have the other possibility to express epsilon. Of course, for example, you might work out the other kind of expression, but it's not local one. It's like uh, inverse of oh, one over box acting on R, this kind of non-local term. And uh, this kind of non-local term will not uh, suffer by the unstable problem, no cost problem, but uh, this is not local term, so it's not a part of case collection from the fundamental. So this is why we say it's not really good for we have this kind of situation. Uh, and the fine tune problem actually is worse than what we see. Uh, non local effects, which is not uh, the first thing we found out, uh, Star Romsky in uh, 1992, he also found out uh, in the pulse spectrum. Uh, what he studied is uh, look at uh, transition from uh, this uh, one constant epsilon jump to the other constant epsilon. And uh, this axis is non square of uh, more function which is proportional to the scalar pulse spectrum. So if this is really local, this is epsilon 1, you have one value, but later when you jump into the epsilon 2, you're supposed to have the other value because it's constant epsilon. But uh, the thing is, you see this winning effect. That means the effect in this uh, epic actually depends on the previous history, so it's not local. What's uh, the meaning of the other uh, Number of inflation in volume. So here we. Uh, it's, uh, yes, it's a relation with time. And that actually I will show you. Sorry. Uh, you have a delta which is plus or minus. What is the delta? Is it 50, 60? Yeah, you have a delta in there. Yeah, actually, I don't remember. <laughs> 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 I don't remember. Zero. Zero actually is around the first horizon course, I guess. Uh, I don't remember. I have to check on the paper. Yeah. But this is the, the result that I just would grab to find. Yeah. But this is inflation in 40 from some, yeah. Uh, so actually you can look at uh, how bad it is if uh, you have this kind of situation. And uh, uh, one thing that you will do this uh, simulation, uh, we have not put the other one. This uh, simulation is uh, suppose right now we have an effective potential then we have uh, this uh, point correction to the effective potential. So we can try to eliminate uh, uh, one data at uh, one instant of time. And what we choose is uh, to eliminate it at the beginning of inflation. 
and uh, later I will show you one has two model, there is one half m square of this square model. You will see this actually uh, change a lot, especially the end of inflation. And uh, from here is just a simple calculation. If you assume the slower approximation, uh, you will get uh, this uh, Hubble climate uh, relation with uh, force slower climate. Okay. And the end of inflation, epsilon, uh, will become uh, much bigger than uh, initial value, I think. So this actually will change. And uh, these things we have not done yet, that is uh, because you know the uh, realistic uh, primordial inflation is very close to the theta, so maybe, because you cannot fine tune that away, so we want to know the residual effects deviates from the theta, that is, if we subtract uh, the quantity, the effective potential with h square replaced by r over 12, but this way you already um, introduce the modified gravity theory and I don't know if it's good or not and maybe we need a further study. So this is why we want to do uh, some more uh, numerical study later. This is intermediate conclusion. Uh, we only know this uh, scalar kind of uh, scalar kind of a model which will need uh, heavy fine tuning and the reheating actually requires coupling this uh, equal time couple to light later. And uh, this kind of effective potential will be show we cannot ignore because the coupling constant is not small. It's not like a gravitational coupling, 10 to the minus 10. And also, we don't know the effective potential for realistic uh, uh, primordial deflation. That is time dependent uh, forces law. What we have known is uh, this uh, effective potential on the theta and taxis form, which I showed you before. And uh, you also know this H square cannot be constant and uh, even not local. So actually, the fine tune problem is worse than what we think. Okay. So this looks very bad because we cannot do whatever we want. But at least uh, maybe it's a new direction for this constraint on the model building. And uh, here, this is the simulation I try to show you. That is. Uh, we try to make assumption that is we replace uh, this uh, classical potential with the uh, theta form of uh, effective potential, but uh, we replace constant h with a uh, time dependence h. That means that we make assumption that uh, even we have a slightly time dependent background, the effective potential still takes the same form as theta. The difference is just the h become time dependent. This is a big assumption, but we don't know this is true or not. This is just to try to see uh, how much it deviates from uh, the theta. So that is this is the original uh, scalar evolution equation. This is V over V. And uh, here we just replace this uh, V over V not an H. And uh, this H is time dependent. And then uh, you have to, because the potential have uh, this uh, background information, so you have to figure out the two uh, Friedman equation and the uh, convenient thing is you specialize the background, uh, not background, uh, specialize this uh, Lagrangian to the homogeneity and the isotropy background. So this is uh, R, which is going turn, potential turn, kinetic turn. When you specialize to the spatial background and you do the variation, we get uh, this uh, equation. Okay, this is a complicated equation. When you specialize to the, when you uh, do the specialized specialization before variation, then you typically lose one constraint. That is, we do not, we cannot get the second equation from this special, uh, specialization or Lagrangian. But we still can get this relation just uh, through the the, uh, the relation between this. Uh, two Friedman equation and the scalar evolution equation uh, due to the constellation law, I think. That is the relation, we still want to keep this relation. The relation is if you take the first time derivative of uh, this uh, zero, zero component x equation, you plus 3h multiply sum of two equations, then you will get a pi g phi naught dot times 
the third equation. Because we want to conserve the energy, so you have this uh, relation still true, and uh, you, you have this evolution equation, you get the one of uh, a freedom equation from spatial relation uh, Lagrangian, then you use this relation to get the other one. Okay. So this is the idea. And uh, the model we consider is a very simple one, that is m square, v square model. Uh, when we want to do the simulation, uh, this is the answer to you because uh, you say why we use the m is the number of inflation enfolding. We always use the number of inflation enfolding at the time uh, for study of uh, something during the primordial inflation. That is because the scale of uh, temporal variation change uh, dramatically during the primordial inflation. So this is why we use the number of enfolding. And the, uh, the, the definition of uh, number E14 is logarithm A of T over A initial time. Okay? So we have to do this uh, uh, change. We do the dimension with the formula because uh, number, if, uh, number of uh, this uh, 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 E14, number of this E14 actually is uh, much more physical, meaningful. Uh, uh, evolution parameter that time. So we change this to this uh, first time derivative, second time derivative with the derivative uh, with respect to n, derivative with second time derivative with respect to n, and also one time derivative with respect to n. We also change all the dimension for quantity to dimensions. Uh, this is a equal uh, time to this. We scale it to dimension is this is dimension is the Hubble parameter, dimension is uh, uh, potential, okay? And uh, we also change this all the equation to the dimension equation. To, this is just the purpose for doing the simulation. And uh, we actually have uh, two models to show you, and I only uh, displayed one that is uh, correction from fermions. Uh, this is a classical term, it's actually from the one half m square of this square is classical term. This is uh, the second piece Actually, it's a content corrective the effect action. And uh, this piece is uh, the thing we want to subtract. Subtract minus the plastic one, and subtract the data at the beginning of inflation. Because uh, if uh, you assume this doesn't evolve, you, you just uh, keep the same, this form is the same. But actually, it's uh, time dependent. So right now, I want to subtract uh, the beginning value to see how much residual effect left over. So this is the idea, and this is the dimension is a fu uh, function here. And uh, oh, okay, the amplitude here we adjust uh, to the roughly e uh, the scale of uh, this uh, scalar power spectrum. Okay, you can adjust this. Otherwise, you will see very weird stuff when you try to uh, simulate the power spectrum, scalar power spectrum. And uh, the initial condition we choose this. Uh, this is the below self-reproduction point. That means we want uh, this uh, primordial inflation start. So we want the people time change per Hubble time uh, bigger or equal to the quantum fluctuation. Because usually if you have a potential, you want the inflation start, you need, a poten you need uh, this um, uh, equal time low down. But the quantum fluctuation tends to make uh, scalar going up. So I want the change of uh, uh, change of infra infra time per uh, unit time of time bigger or equal to this uh, quantum fluctuation. This is the starting point that we choose for initial condition. Of this and you can work out the from this to complicated equation. Okay. I don't want to see yourself.
how, how much worse if I have uh, uh, this a five unit problem? How worse of a five unit problem I have if I have this effective potential? Right, right. I want to go see how, how much deviates from the classical potential. Right. Actually, I don't think at the moment uh, I try to do repeating or. Yeah, that's what also because in the beginning you talked yeah. about reheating. And I ask you, is this what you're doing? <laughs> you get reheating and then you have to re reheat the temperature in your open. In the last part, it seems to me you're focusing on <coughs> a different kind of atom model for the effective potential in order to get the right uh, number of uh, e folding. Uh, if you done both, that would be great. <laughs> yes, but I think uh, what I want to uh, do most uh, at the moment is I try to see how much residual effects from this effective potential because we cannot uh, find you in a way by brute force. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so for example, uh, that critical coupling constant I try to find yeah, because I want to compare with uh, one consistent with the data, the other I want to uh, compare with the only classical model. Yeah, so I want to see if I have this uh, effect potential which I can uh, find you away by brute force and uh, how much residual effects step over. Yeah, but the residual thing needs to be heated. So have you done that? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought in the beginning. No, 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 no. This is the two. I think uh, even this one I we have. Uh, okay, so it's mainly the uh, pre. for less than forever, except uh, you choose the coupling constant very, very small. And also for both that work the other way. Uh, you also have to choose the coupling constant very, very small, otherwise you will end instantly. So actually one thing we think of uh, maybe if we combine two, you know, they work against the competing effects. So we don't know if the ISCO student to do and uh, he cannot get me anything yet. So, I think that's the thing I want to report so far. Thanks very much for your attention. I'd like to follow up with a small question. Since now you've reviewed this part very nicely, years ago, of course, like, when people started <coughs> the uh, inflation models, we, uh, I would have the impression that the lambda has to be 10 to the minus 12 for the lambda 5 for time potential. Of course, later on, people didn't. Bother with it because the lambda is a constant though. Yeah, lambda uh, right. A even No, it's really at that time, very early on. You mean the Yukawa company? You know, even lambda 5 4, let's say. Oh, lambda 5 4. Because I think you touch on that. I just want to check what the present status is of our understanding. Because that still remains, right? Because they said, well, at that time, lambda has to be less than 10 to minus 12. Which means it's very so sorry, uh, lambda here, I mean the coupling constant, I don't mean the, uh, that's, uh, the, the lambda, no, I the quantity term. No, that's why I said, since you know everything here, I <laughs> might as well add on something really trivial. For example, the you have a coupling for top quark is over one. Okay. Yeah, so this is why this is a, uh, this is, is a formula correction, see? We choose F very small, but uh, for example, for the top quark, okay, this is a less than less than forever, and uh, this is the result that I, I don't like much. And of course, for the electron, I think it's much smaller. Okay. Yeah, maybe 10 to minus 5 or minus 6. Yeah, I have to check. Okay. But I know for the top quark, it is more than 1. Very good. So for this type of model, yeah. you're the expert that I should ask. Right? Okay. <laughs> if you're a model, you tell me how big it is. <laughs> Just for the even quantum potential pump, there's a similar problem that you want to suppress the quantum correction, which is the eta homo. Eta homo. Quantum correction, generally, generally, uh, in the uh, eta homo potential. 
which uh, offset the server uh, condition. Yeah. So we want to uh, suppress the back on the data. That's the second derivative of the problem. So, yeah. so I think it's probably similar. You know, we don't have a hidden part. We want to suppress the correction, con correction. And we was also worried about uh, con correction with internal correction. Both of these are important, of course. They may be also the If you yeah. can solve this part, maybe you can also. So I mean if we have to you can solve this problem the same you are this right then we'll be using yeah it's probably this. The same problem. So you want to add is the second solver parameter or yeah second solver parameter is the the problem that uh when we couple the visionary model to use particle physics. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. This is a long way to go, I think. Yeah, yeah, so long way to go.